Hi folks, Scott Sager with you here, RTC TV4, for another edition of The Legal Minute, sponsored by Peterson, Wagoner, and Perkins LLP here in Rochester. Today we're visited with Andy Perkins. Thank you for coming, Andy. Happy to be here, Scott. What are we going to talk about today on The Legal Minute? I want to talk just briefly about uh, judicial sales, uh, uh, tax sales, and sheriff sales. We usually uh, Okay, break tax those sales, down. sheriff sales. We see those in the newspaper all we the do. time. We do. Some people are uh, experts at following those. Some people don't know what they mean. So. <laughs> That's right. Um, just, uh, they, they share some things in common, but it's important to understand the differences. In a sheriff sale, uh, you're, you're generally dealing with a property uh, that is being foreclosed upon. Okay. And, and uh, that usually is a foreclosure from a mortgage, although mm -hmm. it can be a foreclosure from other types Behind of judgments. Behind on payments. Correct. Okay. Correct. Uh, and before, uh, before a property gets to a, to a uh, sheriff sale, there has to be a lawsuit first. There has to be a judgment against the property owner. And uh, in a typical mortgage foreclosure sale, that judgment is brought by the bank or mortgage company, okay. or that lawsuit is brought by the bank or mortgage company. They win the lawsuit. Uh, and then they essentially are saying, Judge, this person signed a note. They didn't pay the note. Uh, we sued them. We got judgment. Now let's talk about this other document, this mortgage, mm -hmm. that backs up the note, and the mortgage authorizes you as the court to order the sheriff to sell this property. Mm -hmm. So so if, uh, if you had a mortgage on my property and I didn't pay you, um, uh, uh, Indian allows you to sue me, uh, you don't have to foreclose my house to pay me. In other words, if you chose to garnish my wages instead of uh, foreclosing the house, in Indiana you could do that. Okay. There are some states that restrict that, say, no, if that money was for the, the, the mortgage and the purchase of the property, mm -hmm. you have to uh, uh, pursue getting paid via foreclosure before property. you can do other things to collect. And um, there are all kinds of notice requirements uh, uh, about having the sheriff sale and uh, uh, one of the advantages, if 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 you sued me and you had my mortgage as the judgment plaintiff, is what we call you at mm -hmm. that point because you want a judgment, uh, you don't have to bid cash at the sheriff's sale. You can bid your judgment, oh. uh, and that that is very common. And most foreclosures uh, from a bank or finance company end up with the, the bank taking the property back, mm -hmm. and that's one of the big reasons. They don't have to put out any cash. They, this person already owes them a judgment by law. They can just bid the judgment. Mm -hmm. And with mortgage companies, there are rules on uh, the bid it has to be a, a minimum amount related to the value of the property. I see. That's to prevent a double recovery where if you were, if you were an individual, mm -hmm. you're not really bound by that, but if you were a bank, you can't sue me, get a judgment for the full amount of my house, bid $10 at the sheriff's sale, and now have the house and the judgment. Uh, you're, not, you're not entitled to that kind of double recovery. Right. So the, the sheriff's sale is all about it's really the extension of a collection action, mm -hmm, okay? Mm -hmm. It's it's kind of the ultimate tool that a mortgage company has to get paid is mm -hmm. to sell the house. Uh, a tax sale is really a different animal altogether. Okay. In a tax sale, um, uh, there is a period uh, often referred to as the redemption period between when the property goes up for sale to when the... Uh, uh, the bidder becomes the owner. Okay. There can be a lot of confusion mm -hmm. with tax sales about that, but uh, typically most tax sales are in the fall around September. They'll be coming up pretty soon. And the the, the tax sale uh, occurs after non-payment, mm -hmm. but at the sale, the winner gets what's called the tax certificate. Mm -hmm. That is not the deed. And right. so that's, that's the first kind of... Uh, uh, Misunderstanding yeah, a little bit of misconception have. on that. And so I can go to the sale. I'm sorry, yep, to no, but I can go to the sale, I, the the tax sale. Mm -hmm. I can say yes, I will pay the two thousand dollars in back taxes. Um, they will give me a tax certificate. certificate. And then there's a period in which the original owner actually can go back and. Pay original or? owner, or by statute, anyone can pay that. Oh, really? Someone can pay it on behalf of the original owner. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, that period of time depends on uh, what type of sale it is. The uh. When people say tax sale, sometimes there's some vagueness in the definition. A true tax sale has a, has a one-year redemption period. And okay. in that year, uh, uh, it's not just a waiting period for the winning bidder. 
the winning bidder also has to send a, a particular notice in a timely way that advises the anyone interested in the property, not just the owner, but anyone interested. Mm -hmm. Could be other, could be people who hold mortgages or, mm -hmm. or uh, mechanics liens. They all have a right to be notified of certain things and timelines. Um, uh, when interest rates are particularly low. It's not a bad investment sometimes uh -huh. because you're entitled to some interest mm -hmm. uh, on that depending on when the redemption is paid. Mm -hmm. You're also entitled, if you, if you properly record some, some affidavits, you're entitled not only to get paid what you bid, but if you spent something on uh, attorney's fees or title searches, uh, you're entitled to add that to the amount you're... Recoup all your fees you're, you're that you've recouping. outlaid. Correct. Um, and that that's the way the the tax sale works. Now there, there was another sale, uh, we often refer to it as the commissioner's sale, mm -hmm. and it usually happens in the in the spring. And the purpose of the commissioner's sale is to give the county the option to sell those properties that did not sell at the tax sale. Oh, wow. uh, if if my house uh, is not worth the back taxes, mm -hmm. and it's it's not uncommon to have a tax sale property no one bids on or no mm -hmm. one bids enough, mm -hmm. and when that happens, the commissioners essentially become holders of the certificate at that okay. point. And at the commissioner's sale, they're not bound by any minimums that involve payment of taxes. I see. So uh, some of the real deals can be had at the commissioner's sale. On the other hand, uh, uh, you may wait for that commissioner's sale and find out, well, someone bid it at the tax sale. So the commissioner's sales also have a shorter time frame okay. uh, after the sale. So in other words, rather than waiting a year, mm -hmm. uh, uh, there's a shorter time frame. Of course, you have to get those notices out mm -hmm. in a shorter time frame. So what happens when the time frame expires, whether the, the long time frame or the short one? In either scenario, your next step is to petition the court to order the auditor to issue you the deed. Okay. So some people think that you know, I have the certificate. I just wait. No, you really have to do some things, or or or, or that money you're going to lose mm -hmm. if you don't follow the notice procedure and the petition correctly. And so you petition the court uh, to order the auditor to issue the deed. And essentially, that petition says, "I'm the holder of the certificate. I properly sent out all the notices. I'm entitled to this deed now." Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I get questions about both uh, yeah. those processes. Um, uh, one of the other important differences is that the, at the sheriff's sale, um, a deed from the sheriff uh, is not a warranty deed. It co doesn't come with any promises. If the if the mortgage company that started that foreclosure case uh, did not name one of the lien holders, mm -hmm. the lien holder is not bound by that lawsuit, and you could bid on something at sheriff's sale and find out you just bought it subject to this $12,000 mechanics lien mm -hmm. uh, because they didn't get named in the lawsuit. Mm -hmm. um, in, a, uh, uh, in a tax sale, you're really getting a superior deed. Uh, mm -hmm. you, are, you are getting, to, to use kind of an, an old English law uh, concept, you're getting the deed of the sovereign. You're getting mm -hmm. the king's deed mm -hmm. in a way. Uh, and so uh, they're, they're very, very minor uh, uh, exceptions to that and more has to do with timing of when things happen but essentially when you get that deed uh, dating back to the date of the sale at least you're getting it, it free and clear wow. okay and that's why it's so important to send those notices mm -hmm. to all the interested yeah. parties because it's not just the owner who might say oh my goodness I forgot to pay my taxes mm -hmm. uh, uh, people, people at banks get fired over that kind of thing mm -hmm. if if a deed gets sold out from under them, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and lesser lien holders like uh, if if you sued me and got a, got a you know a two hundred dollar judgment in small claims court, mm -hmm. if you're not notified, uh, um, that could really upset my right to get the deed. Mm -hmm. But if you're not notified in the sheriff sale process, that is, you're not a defendant to that suit, mm -hmm. it just means I, the the winning bidder takes it subject to. To your judgment lien, right? Okay. If you're not notified of the tax sale procedure, um, you could actually come in and and uh, object to that and get my whole deed mm -hmm. upset, and, yeah. and I would be as a winning bidder, I'd be back to square one. So the the risks are different. If I'm yeah. a bidder at a sheriff sale, the risk is more about uh, the property and and the title. Um, there's less form. There's less paperwork for me to do. If I'm a bidder at a sheriff sale. I don't necessarily need to ha hire a lawyer mm -hmm. uh, to, to bid. The mechanics right. of that are all handled by the sheriff and the plaintiff, right. judgment plaintiff. Um, 
but if I'm the winning bidder at a tax sale, uh, I've got I got some real important paperwork to do after yeah. that before I before and that's where I the attorneys the can come in and help. Right, right, right. Uh, we certainly have have assisted people with with tax sale issues in the past. Mm -hmm. um, uh, with sheriff sales, I've represented bidders. Uh, I've also represented uh, judgment plaintiffs who are who are having the the sale. And a lot of that is is managed electronically now. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a private company. Uh, called SRI, which saw a market for this several years ago, and has gone to smaller counties and said to the sheriffs, to the auditors, "We can, um, we can make this easy. We for can you. make this easy for you." <laughs> and and it was a little hard going at first, I think, uh, for them to bring in uh, the the various differences of different counties. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that process is streamlined, and 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 those things, by and large, get done with with less fuss than they used to. It's amazing, and. You know, first of all, when I was in college, I used to take copious notes, and I feel like I should have a notebook <laughs> here. And by the time I'm done with Legal Minute over over the course of the time we do this, I should have a law degree. I, I really should. <laughs> but it amazes me the nuances to things that you guys have to truly understand and, and retain. It's not something you're going to Google. It's something that you have to have in your brain because it guides the way you maneuver through the process. And to know that the American government system is set up where the county really sets its own rules. There, there's a lot there's a lot to be said for uh, what Indiana calls home rule. Mm -hmm. the, the ability of counties and municipalities like cities and towns uh, to be able to control a lot of what they do. That's uh, and that still is that still is definitely true. Yeah. Uh, there, there are certainly state statutes that govern procedures, uh, but uh, when it comes to probably sheriff sales more than tax sales, mm -hmm. uh, you see uh, still see a fair amount of variation yeah. uh, in the way they each county will do things. Sure, that, that's interesting. And and we're local. Local government is supposed to be the strongest form of government. Sure. And, uh, I think that uh, the headlines always shout about what's happening at the White House or in Congress, but the real stuff's happening right here. In it, def Dr. Dr. it definitely <laughs> affects us all, that's it for does. sure. It for does. Sure. Well, Andy Perkins here, uh, some interesting stuff, Andy. I appreciate it. As always, folks, if you have questions about this subject or any subject of law, feel free to give the folks here at Peterson Wagoner and Perkins LLP a call. Any of their office assistants can guide you on who you need to speak with and why. And Andy, we'll see you next time here, and uh, hopefully we'll see you next time right here on RTC TV4.